Hey everyone, welcome to a new Common UI tutorial. In this video, I'm actually gonna be going over the carousel widget. Uh, now this widget itself isn't actually that difficult to put together, but uh, if you don't know how Common UI usually works, then it may take a while to understand it, especially if you're taking a look at the documentation because basically there is none. Uh, you just get to see the events of them and that's about it. So in this video, I am going to lay out how you can set it up, how you can go about um, changing the pages if you wanted to manually set it um, it also has a built-in auto scroll function uh, you can also stop the scrolling begin it um, basically if you want to know what it, the carousel widget is it's basically either images buttons pages whatever you want that will scroll uh, automatically on its own or you can scroll it based upon arrows uh, whatever you want to do in this video i'm just going to do it based upon images just because that's the simplest way to go about it I'll show you how you can connect a nav bar as well as just individual buttons if you wanted to allow somebody to manually go left and right. Uh, kind of think like video games with their, um, no, obviously video game, uh, but with their uh, like patch notes and it will scroll and be like new feature released or new bundle out, whatever it may be. Uh, things like that would be categorized as like a carousel. Um, anyways, so let's get into it. All right, so I am not gonna be going over inputs again in this video. I covered it in like the other ones and I'm just not gonna do that here. Uh, so I already have the input set up. If you don't have it set up, go take a look at the other videos that I made. You can go ahead and set up the inputs. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, let's get into it. Uh, I'm using a current project so you can ignore all this other stuff because we're just gonna create new stuff. Um, I actually tend to spell carousel terribly, terribly wrong. So I'm just gonna copy and paste it um, because my brain doesn't work, so. All right, so we're gonna go into here and what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a brand new widget. And then from here, we're gonna just type in a common activatable widget. If I can select that. And then I have, have been struggling on deciding on how I wanna go through with naming conventions. Now the normal naming convention you see is WBP, um, but I do see a lot of CUI as well as UI. Um, Epic in their own project uses UI, so I can't really say that that's not a good way to go about it if Epic themselves are doing it. Uh, so for this, we'll just do UI, but typically what I do is I do widget blueprint, um, but I'll just do UI for this. Um, so for here, we're just gonna, once again, type in carousel, uh, copy and pasting, cause um, yeah, like I said, my brain. Okay, so for here, what we are gonna want to set up is basically this is gonna be the activatable widget. So you can add this into um, like a stack if you want, or you can add it um, as its own page, whatever you wanna do. If you're adding it as its own page, you most likely don't need to put it as an activatable widget, unless it's gonna be like inside of a switcher. Uh, but for this case, uh, I just did activate a widget, but uh, I'm just going to create it as like the main page. So anyways, moving on, we're going to once again type in carousel. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just pull that in. So you'll notice that carousel right here has nothing in there. Don't worry about that in a second. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this in a um, verticals up down. So we want to get a vertical. And then we're also gonna grab this. Oh, I just realized I grabbed the wrong carousel. We want the common widget carousel. All right, so let me draw, uh, delete that one. We're gonna hit that fill button. And then I'm just gonna do like 0 0.9. And then we'll also go over here and hit that fill button, just do like 0 0.1. I'm gonna rename this to nav bar. And then we'll name this just carousel. We're gonna keep that nice and simple. So with the carousel, kind of like a um, widget, do, 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 what am I looking for? Like a widget switcher, you can just add in buttons, um, images, whatever you want, and then you'll be able to switch according to that. Uh, so like a carousel, we're going to then add a bunch of images here. So we'll just do image. And we'll throw those on here. And then let's go ahead and name these. Let's go with like image zero. And then I'm gonna create four of them. One, two, three, four. And then let's just change, oops, I didn't mean to do that. 
just realize it didn't copy the same. Okay, so we'll do that and move that down. Started from zero just because index zero just makes it a bit easier for my brain. Let's go ahead and switch all of these colors. You also notice that little nice animation of it moving. Uh, what's another color we haven't used yet? Cool. And yellow. Okay. So if we click on them, you'll notice that it has nice little animation moving. That's automatically built in for the carousel. So from here, you can actually set what index it will automatically set. So if you wanted to just go straight to three, it will start off at three uh, or one, whatever you want. Uh, you also have the ability to control that within the graph as well. So yeah. Doo -doo. And along the lines of what's available here, there's honestly not a lot shown here. Uh, it just shows you that you have an event based upon when it, whatever the current page index has changed. For the nav bar, the one thing we want to set here uh, is the carousel nav bar, this section right here. So this will actually set what type of button it is. So depending on how many indexes you have within the carousel will depend on how many buttons are created within here. So this is if you want to have a nav bar where they can go through and select each button uh, to get to whatever page. I know a lot of games tend to just have like a left or right arrow. So you can absolutely do that. I'll show you how you can do that in a bit. Uh, but first, let's just create a very standard button widget type. So we're going to go through here. Um, I think we went common UI. Let's just do um, button style, whatever you want to do it. Um, B style, and we'll just do button. Okay. Button base. And then for this button base, we'll just do another overlay. It's not a style. I shouldn't have done that. Uh, let's move this into carousel. I didn't mean, not mean to copy, so we'll just delete that. Carousel. We'll rename this to UI BTN base. Okay. We're going to open that up. We'll have it nice and simple. I'm not going to do anything fancy here. We're going to go ahead, go into the style, and this is where we'll actually create our style. So we'll go in here. And for here, we'll just do B style. You can actually just do like style, whatever you want to do. B style base. And I like to reopen it because I just don't like to see everything that appears when I do the style. So like this. Hmm. So let's go ahead and customize our base. We're going to do, let's have kind of a pinkish color. And then let's go ahead and do maybe like a, like a purple when it's hovered. And then when it's pressed, let's go ahead and do kind of this color. I don't even know what that is. And then for disabled, we could just put it like gray. I don't think we'll actually be doing a disabled, but nonetheless. So with that, we have our buttons set up pretty nicely. Let's go back to our carousel. So what we need to do first is we need to now connect our nav bar to our carousel. It doesn't do that automatically. You have to go into the event graph. So let's go ahead here. <clears throat> and then off of the pre-construct, we're going to go ahead and grab our nav bar. We're going to grab our carousel. And then for the nav bar, it's super simple, set linked carousel. It actually only has like one thing to do. So if we typed in carousel, you'll notice that under the carousel nav bar, set link carousel. That's all it does. It doesn't really do anything else. And then you want to plug that in. So from here, we now have our link carousel. And actually, I could probably showcase you the nav bar already. So let's go ahead and give me one second to figure out where in the world I am creating my um, UI. Let's go with, um, is it the controller? Let's just 
go ahead and get rid of that, whatever that is supposed to be. We'll do create widget. Nope, not timer widget. Create widget. We're going to do our carousel. Add to viewport. And then we'll do set mouse cursor to this. All right. I forgot one other thing. Set UI mode only. Oop. That's self. You actually don't need to do that when it's inside. I meant to do that. Flush input. But it actually looked like it didn't connect automatically. So it looks like the... Oh, and that's because widget button type. I created it, but I didn't actually set it. So let's do that. And then let's add a little padding. Let's just say like 20. So let's go into here and hit play. So now we'll notice that we have four buttons up here. I don't believe I set a auto scroll time. I wonder what the default may be. But if I click these, I can move through. So the nav bar does automatically appear already. And then I believe we probably have to touch something for auto scroll. Give it a second. Um, yeah, okay. So for auto scroll, let's grab the carousel here again and let's auto scroll. And you can actually set the amount of intervals. We can set this to like, say like two. And then we should see it scroll quickly. One, two, one, two, one, two. All right, so we have auto scroll right there. So honestly, that is a very simple way to set things up automatically. Because right then and there, you could then go and customize your images, your pages, whatever you want. And you wouldn't need to do more. But of course, if you want to do what most games do and you have those like nice little arrow things, I'm not going to use an image of arrows, but I will show you how you can set it up uh, to have that. So what we're going to do is aside from having the nice little nav bar, uh, let's go ahead and we're going to wrap this in a horizontal box. So we're going to add a widget to the left and the right. Uh, let's go ahead and hit that fill button. I'm going to type uh, 0 0.9. And then let's go ahead and add a new button. So we have our button base that we created. Let's add one up here. We'll do control D. And oh, nope, I wanted to go down here. Come on, you can do it. Or I can't. There we go. Okay. Well, we're just going to name, name this BTN, right? And then for here, we do BTN left. We're going to go ahead and hit that fill button 0 0.1. Fill 0 0.1. Let's do a minimum. Do we need to do a minimum width? Nah, that's fine. Let's also do a 20 padding though. And then we have our base. You can honestly, you can see the scrolling go through every two seconds there as well. Hmm. Okay. So with that, let's go ahead and go into our event graph and let's get these buttons to work. So we're gonna go ahead and click on our carousel. Um, we could drag it off. Oh. Come on. Okay. And then for our left button, we want to select the on button base clicked because for common UI buttons, it's button base. Go through here. We're going to go to our right button and we're going to do the same thing. And it's going to be super easy. So when the left button is pressed, we're going to do previous because for the left button, you want it to go in. I guess I can't do an arrow, but we're going to be scrolling the opposite direction as it's auto scrolling. So we want to be able to go to the previous page. And then for this carousel, uh, the right button for the carousel is next page. Like that. 
And technically speaking, you could also do stuff where if somebody pressed the previous page, you could also do like um, auto scroll and auto scrolling, plug that in. And you could stop it from scrolling. Uh, so if we went over into here, press play, should still be auto scrolling. And you also notice that the nav bar does switch through on the top automatically. If we press the left button, we're moving through. And then if you wait two seconds, you'll notice the auto scrolling has stopped. And now I can navigate through all of these. Um, it looks like I actually have it backwards with the left and the right. Um, I wonder why the right next page is going left. Huh. So actually, let's go ahead and switch these. I guess I didn't have to disconnect that. We can just do this. Two, two, two. Yeah, that looks more correct to me. So like that, we do have a functioning nav bar where we can navigate through. Uh, we can go to the next page. Uh, this is super ugly. Let me clean that up a little. Um, I could actually just do this instead. Move this around because we're going to clean this a little. Now the auto scrolling does end. You could do something with like a custom event, custom event. We could be like um, start timer. And then from here, we can then create timer, uh, timer. Is it start timer by event um, to kind of explain what I'm doing. So we ended the auto scrolling, but let's say we want it to eventually start up again if the player just stopped interacting so let's say they hit the arrow key they pause the auto scroll but you want it to get started again so what we'd want to do is we want to have a way to restart it so let's go ahead and create the event or let's just add event I don't know. okay auto scroll start Oop, i can't spell And what we would want to do is we're going to once again grab that carousel. And then we'll go ahead and auto scroll begin. And then we could do two. And then another thing we could do is instead we can promote this to a scroll interval. Hit that compile button. And then let's also duplicate it up here so that we don't have to reuse or manually change it for ourselves. We'll call that once. And then what we would do is make sure to promote this so that whenever this event is called, we can just clear that timer out. So let's go ahead and um, can we do like a is valid? No, clear by handle. I wonder if is valid timer handle. Hold on, we'll see if we get an error first. And then if we don't, we probably have to do a branch and then clear. Uh, okay. And then after these buttons are clicked, we're just gonna be able to hmm, call this start timer event. Start timer event. Plug that in. And then let's also just Instead of two seconds, let's just go with like five. And then let's see if uh, we get this to work. So let's go ahead and highlight this, move that over. Uh, let's move that in and then let's take a look. Okay, so over two seconds, we'll see the page change. Another two seconds, I'll do it again. And then now when we hit this button, it's gonna take five seconds, which it should eventually, there we go. And then it should go back to two seconds. So like that, we now have auto scrolling. We also have the ability to pause it and restart it over time to help 
<clears throat> get it back to auto scrolling again. So like that, it's super easy to use. It has very, very easy functions, but the documentation itself actually doesn't cover a lot. So if you actually take a look at the documentation, hmm, sorry for all the coughing, I have been sick for quite some time, but we have the begin, we have and auto scrolling, and basically just the events, and that is about it. So I actually find this quite lacking and not very informative. All it does is tell you very basic stuff. It doesn't actually even tell you how to use the nav bar. So not a fan. But with that, you can now properly create a carousel. Uh, if you end up finding some more uses for the carousel, I'd love to hear it in the comment section. If you have um, any type of common UI requests, uh, feel free to reach out. Uh, one I'm currently working on is to get mouse keyboard to work properly with inputs on common UI. I know that is a common request, but I am working on it and I will get a video out as soon as I do. If you enjoy these videos, uh, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you all for your support, all of the self promo stuff. Have a great rest of your guys' day.